Lesson number three, using microorganisms. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the advantages of using microorganisms for food production and also describe how a fermenter is used to cultivate microorganisms. Industrial fermenters are used to make a wide range of products. As well as human insulin, a number of medicines are made, such as the antibiotic penicillin, which is a product of a mould called penicillium. Many other species of microorganisms are grown in fermenters to produce foods and drinks. People have been using microorganisms to make foods and drinks for thousands of years. Yeast is a single-celled fungus. It is used to make bread, wine and beer. Cheese and yogurt can be made from milk using microorganisms called lactic acid bacteria. Blue cheeses are made using types of mould. The most widely used fermented food in the world is soy sauce which is made in China, Japan and many other parts of Asia. Three microorganisms are used to produce soy sauce, a mould, a bacterium and a yeast. Another food is actually made of microorganisms. Mysoprotein is a meat substitute that you have probably heard of as corn. It is used to make a range of pies, burgers, ready meals and other foods. Mysoprotein contains the fine threads of a fungus. There are conditions in which each species of microorganism grows best. These are known as the optimum conditions for growth. They include a particular mixture of nutrients, an optimum temperature and an optimum pH. The conditions inside the fermenter can be carefully controlled so that the microorganisms will produce as much of the product as possible. This is called the maximum yield. Before the fermenter is filled with fresh nutrients and culture, measures must be taken to avoid contamination by unwanted organisms. These measures are called aseptic precautions. The inside of the tank and all the pipes are cleaned and sterilized. This is usually done with very hot steam under high pressure. If these precautions are not taken, two problems might arise. Firstly, any bacteria or fungi that manage to get into the fermenter would contaminate the product with their cells or waste chemicals. Secondly, the contaminating organisms would compete with the organisms in the culture, reducing the yield of the product. What do bread, cheese, and soy sauce have in common? They are diet staples of billions of people around the world, and they are produced by fermentation. These foods and many others are made possible by the use of enzymes in food production. Hi, I'm Dr. David Targan, and welcome to BioBites. So what exactly is fermentation? Well, it's the conversion of the carbohydrates in milk, meat, fish, vegetables, cereals, and other organic matter by microorganisms or enzymes into acids or alcohols. Milk, without refrigeration, will spoil very quickly. But if you turn that same milk into a hard cheese, it can last for many months. This is particularly important in developing nations that lack or are limited in refrigeration capabilities. And it is one reason why fermented foods make up about one third of the diet of humans today. People have been preserving food with this process for thousands of years. So biotechnology is really just inventing new ways to improve this old process. Researchers are now utilizing and modifying enzymes to make fermentation more efficient and also to increase the quality, safety, and product consistency of preserved foods. Enzymes aid in the manufacture of fruit juice, corn syrup, candies with soft centers, beer, cheese, sausage, and many other foods and drinks. In fact, food producers use over 55 different enzymes to make many basic elements of our diets. Biotechnology also makes food enzymes more widely available. Chymosin, an enzyme used to make various cheeses, occurs naturally in the stomachs of calves, lambs, and baby goats. By modifying the genes of microorganisms, scientists have now created a way for yeasts, molds and bacteria 
to produce chymosin, eliminating the reliance on livestock for this enzyme. Scientists also are improving the production capabilities of the food industry as a whole. One bacterium used in the production of many yogurts and cheeses is vulnerable to viral infection. Using recombinant DNA technology, researchers have made some strains of these bacteria resistant to viruses. This means that fewer batches of cheese have to be thrown away due to contamination, resulting in abundant, healthful, and less expensive food for people worldwide. For BioBytes, I'm Dr. David Targan.